Hey everyone, welcome to the James Vlogs. This is the first day of James. Yes, I am so excited for this, you guys. I have you here in my recording studio. Okay, yeah, it's my closet, actually. <laughs> um, this is where I usually record my guided meditations because this is a very quiet place in our house. Um, our house can be very loud at times, so um, it's a little more quiet in here. So that's where we are. I will probably be do not necessarily be doing all of my vlogs in here. Day one of James. I'll be reading from the NASB version. James, a bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. To the 12 tribes who are dispersed abroad, greetings. Consider it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. But if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But he must ask in faith without any doubting, for the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For that person ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord, being a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Now the brother or sister of humble circumstances is to glory in his high position, but the rich person is to glory in his humiliation, because like flowering grass, he will pass away. For the sun rises with its scorching heat and withers the grass, and its flowers fall off, and the beauty of its appearance is destroyed. So also the rich person, in the midst of his pursuits, will die out. Hey everyone. Okay, first of all, this is what I want to say. If you haven't yet listened to the Bible Project overview of the book of James, I highly recommend that, you guys. It's really good. Um, I'm going to be referencing it a little bit in this video. Um, and still, um, if you haven't seen it yet, still go watch it. I think that would be awesome. Now, um, here's kind of my idea, like what's going on in my mind in this vlog conversation. In my mind, I'm having you guys all over for dinner and we're at my little table and we're talking about James. Um, but unfortunately, it's just me and then there's nobody with me, but you're with me in my heart and these are the things I would wanna talk about if we were together and I wish we were. Um, and in fact, you guys can even, if you would like to, you can put, a, put your thoughts and reactions in the comments, the things that you would like to talk about or reactions to the things I've said in the spirit of continuing this conversation. So, um, so in my mind, these are dinner table conversations, you know. So let's talk about James or Jacob as the Bible Project video tells us that his name probably was. Um, okay, this is what I think is so cool about this book. Well, there's so many things. One of the things that's really cool about this book, James, is that James was the brother, well, half-brother of Jesus. And as the half-brother of Jesus, that means a couple of things that are pretty cool to me. One thing that that means to me that's pretty cool is that James, I would assume, grew up with Jesus. Like, he might have known him better than almost anyone because, like, he lived his whole life with him. So, to hear directly from his perspective someone who knew Jesus so well is like, oh, I just love that. That's so cool. And then another thing that makes it very cool to me about him being a half-brother of Jesus is um, the credibility that that gives Jesus. I, I mean, if you know what I mean, like, 
someone who knew him that well would have every reason to like doubt him, find fault with him, to um, really be more of an antagonist, perhaps. But he, and he's not just like, yo, my bro, man. He's like, he doesn't just talk about him like he's his brother. Well, that takes us right to the next thing, which is the opening verse. He describes himself as a bond servant in the NASB translation. So, which I love that phrase too, you guys. Like, um, this is from what I understand of the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, you, every seven years, you would set your slaves free. They were never permanent slaves. They got the chance for freedom and you set them off with the generosity too. That's how God wanted it to be done. You know, with everything they needed to get a fresh start, which is such a cool system. Like, isn't that so cool? But if a slave loved his master and felt that his master took good care of him, and I guess I would say better care of him than he could even take care of himself, he could stay with his master forever. He could pledge permanent servanthood to his master. In fact, they had a ceremony that they would do where um, they would take the slave to the door and put his ear against the Sorry, that might have made a microphone noise. Put his ear against the door frame and run, a, I think it was called an awl, which I believe would be a nail, through his ear. They would pierce his ear on the door frame. And this was their covenant that he would become a permanent servant. Never to, again to have a chance to go free and always to be under the good, loving care of this master whom he has come to want to give his life to. And so James, the brother of Jesus, says that he is the bond servant of Jesus. Oh, you guys, that is so beautiful. I love that so much. So, um, yeah, I want to get that out there. Now, um, next I want to talk about the part where he talks about, um, having joy in all trials because I think that is a really interesting verse. I mean, by interesting, I mean it's amazing and kind of scary at the same time and a little bit like, whoa, like really? But I mean, if we're going to take this seriously and as we meditate on what that means, that's a pretty amazing verse. But I want to step back first a little bit and um, talk about some of my historical experience with that verse. Because that verse says how um, if you um, have joy, and you should have joy in trials because when you persevere, that gives you endurance. And when you have endurance, that you will become perfect. Okay, and then I was like, well, first of all, perfect? I don't know about that. And endurance, like, is it really worth it? Like, that just didn't have that much attraction to me. Like, okay, that, I, I mean, endurance is good, but is it good enough for me to have an attitude of joy in trials? I don't know. It just wasn't that, like, I mean, I'm just being honest. I just wasn't, like, that as an argument wasn't that persuasive to me. Not that I'm doubting the Bible or God. I'm just saying my little brain did not wrap around that. So um, listening to the Bible Project video, though, one of the things that they explained that was a helpful new lens on that is that um, this perfection is more like saying that you'll be complete particularly in the way of um, if you're not complete that you are like fractured and broken you're not a whole person and you're not integrated with like your beliefs and your actions aren't integrated that you're uh, it's the opposite of integrity right and um, so I've, 
I've been thinking about that. Like, that's kind of a cool perspective. And it also um, reminds me of what I've been reading in my, I've been reading a book by Dietrich von Hildebrand called Transformation in Christ. Uh, and um, every chapter is a different attitude that brings transformation in Christ. One of the things he talks about is simplicity. And when he talks about simplicity, he's not talking about what we talk about with simplicity generally. He's talking about an inner alignment where everything in your core, your beliefs, your heart, your actions, they all line up with the purpose and the um, direction and the love of God. So it's this that it's this truest sense of integrity that everything within you lines up in that. And he uses the word simplicity for that, which is kind of an interesting way to say simplicity, kind of beautiful. But as I think about it, and I think about like my own life where I'm fractured and where I don't have integrity, those are the places, you know, where I'm away from God. Those are the places that are the places that really need to change. Like, I know that what I want and the, the best life that I could have would be a life of worshiping Him and praising Him and every choice being in alignment with Him. So, those are some reflections on that thought of integrity. And, um, and that, that's just... Um, kind of cool that's like it's seeming it's resonating more with me now as I meditate on it more and again not that the Bible needs to resonate with me for me to follow it believe it and trust it because he better be a lot smarter than me and he better have some things that don't make sense to me because I am I can't understand all of his ways so um also in the Bible project video he talks about the part that says asking for wisdom, that God will give you wisdom if you ask with faith. And um, this was uh, interesting to me because I, in the past reading this, I didn't see those two thoughts as being linked, which has actually been a problem that I have historically had with the Bible. A personal like flaw that I've had is that I don't read things I haven't traditionally read things as connected as they need to be, as they are with one another. So anyway, um, I wasn't realizing that that part about asking for wisdom was linked to finding joy in trials. And the Bible Project video helped me to see that um, what James may be talking about here is wisdom, meaning the perspective to see that we can and should and when we're in God will have joy in all of our trials and that is a different perspective like so that's kind of a cool way to look at that too I thought and that brings me to another thought which is I've just really enjoyed soaking in the idea of having joy in trials I mean I get, like I say, I'm a little bit like, oh, do I really have to have trials? But we are going to have trials, right? So if we know that in God we can have joy in these trials, like, that's amazing. That's the best safety net ever is knowing that, because we know, if we're honest with ourselves, we know the trials aren't going away. That Christianity isn't a life of easy circumstances. Nothing. There is no life that's going to give you easy circumstances. So to know that, know that when those hard times are on us, that we can have and will have joy, that's amazing. That's the best life you could ask for, right? Like, that's so awesome. So, um, that some, some of you guys know I've been, uh, I try to pick a gem on most days or something that stands out for me that I just keep bringing my mind back to. And for me, my gem in this day was joy in trials. And the more that I brought that to mind, just the richer and more beautiful that became. And so I praise you, Jesus.